Ross, known for making contrarian investments in distressed assets. So what is on his shopping list right now? We want to bring in W.L. Ross and company chairman Wilbur Ross. Wilbur, good to see you. Good to see Thanks you. Thanks so much for joining us. So can you assess the markets for us right now? We've been having a discussion this morning about the potential for a recession in the next six months to a year and the clear evidence of a recession in just the industrial part of this economy. How do you see things? Well, the industrial part of the economy employs only about 9% of the population now. So it's not the be-all and end-all of the whole economy. But ultimate demand seems pretty weak. Many of the companies had been making of their bottom line estimates due to cost saving, but very few were hitting their top line estimates. What so about markets? Do you like markets here? Do you, would you put new money to work in markets here? Or you want to? I think it's a little tricky right in here. There's too much unknown at the moment. Wilbur, how do you think about the secular problems? Like if you think of the demographic issues that we have with baby boomers past their spending peaks in the next, really the next five years where that population growth uh, really has carried the consumption economies around the world for a long time, it's moving into their post baby boom spending years. Well, yeah, that's happening. And what's not happening is the millennials are not spending at the same rate as the prior generation. Mm -hmm. I think that's more of a sociological problem. The, the dream of a family, children, a little cottage in the country, that doesn't <laughs> seem to be what the millennials are up no. to. Well, how about, yeah. the, how about the economies that don't have an, a millennial generation, Japan and Europe? I mean, you've spent a lot of time, obviously, right. investing in Europe. I, I'm interested in your thoughts there. Well, in Japan, I'm a believer in Abenomics. I really do think he will get women more into the workforce. And that's the real solution, the only feasible solution to the demographic problem mm -hmm. in Japan. There are only about 26 million women in the workforce in Japan. Is that it? Well. And that's the lowest percentage of any OECD country. Wow. Mm. There have been all sorts of cultural barriers historically to it. He's gradually lifting those. He put a lot of women into his cabinet, building daycare centers, doing all the things that are needed to facilitate women coming into the workforce. I like it. European, I like that a lot. Uh, that, that's much more positive than what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> on the, on the yeah. European side, though, what do you see there? Well, I don't think you can talk about Europe as one undifferentiated mass. Has anyone ever introduced himself to you as a European? <laughs> no. Right, that's a good point. As <laughs> yeah, I'm Italian, I'm the the Spanish, Spanish or whatever. Yeah. Or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, until people introduce themselves as European, it'll continue to be a bit of a myth. Yeah, but we got to talk about Europe for a second, specifically as it relates to the Greek bank sure. recapitalization, because, of course, uh, th this recapitalization plan that they're talking about is diluting existing shareholders. I mean, you're a major shareholder in Eurobank. Yes, we are. Well, not so major relative to us, but fairly large relative to Eurobank. Yeah, well, Eurobank is the one that came out the best. We have the least problems coming out of the new stress test. For, so we have already been the one bank that is not majority owned by the government. Mm. We're 65 percent privately owned. And I believe the outcome of this current offering will be to dilute the government relatively more than to dilute the outside holders, because we will be subscribing and government can only subscribe in the event private sector doesn't take up the shares. Does it feel like things are getting better? Well, Greece, the only problem Greece has had has been its government. <laughs> <laughs> the economy itself, left to its own, but was doing fine. It actually rose right through June, despite all the turmoil, despite all the uncertainty about whether they would leave the euro. And in the period post-capital controls, it hasn't been that bad. Over a half a trillion, half a billion dollars has already come back into the banks. And there's probably 30 billion of it sitting under mattresses or sealed into walls. That'll gradually percolate its way back into the economy. I, I want to go back to something you said before, that there's kind of a lack of end user demand. And right. I think we see that in the industrial space. Maybe we see that in the consumer space. Right. How do we fix that? And where does that demand ultimately come from? Well, consumers have been starting to change their habits. And I think the biggest change has been that you have about a third of the workfor a workforce age people not in the workforce. Mm -hmm. They neither right. have a job yeah. nor want one. And when you add in those who are unemployed or underemployed, 
What it really means is three gainfully employed people have to lug along two more who are not. Yep. That's a very heavy lift for an economy. And this private sector can't do much to help that 40 percent. Well, but you talked about unknowns. There are too many unknowns right now. What needs to get cleared up? What are you looking for to make you confident to invest here? Interest rates, American politics, geopolitics, those are a few. Oh, that's <laughs> it? Inter <laughs> but, interest that's all? <laughs> but interest rates, I mean, expand on that. What do you mean? You want the Federal Reserve to move on rates? Oh, yeah. I think they should have done it ages ago. I don't know why they're so yeah. chicken. So a rate hike would make you confident to invest? Well, in what part. it would do, no, it isn't that it would make lower prices confident. to invest in it probably. Would, <laughs> it would start to clear the air. Yeah. The danger is that we'll gradually slurp into the next recession with the Federal Reserve having an empty toolbox. But what about the fact that if they can't raise rates because the economy is too weak? Mm. But they can. Look, if the only thing keeping the economy going is 25 basis points, right. That's not much to hang your but, head But the, 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 the problem I, I, I at least find with that argument is that the Federal Reserve, they could raise one basis point. It would be the first time that the Bernanke Yellen Fed has ever raised into a slowdown. How do you think about that? I mean, as a, as a buyer, you're not a buyer of highs. You're a buyer of lows. I think you know that any interest rate hike would create a different complexion of asset prices. I, I think the bigger problem is the uncertainty. They have gotten everybody hysterical with these repeated things. Well, the rate hike is coming. Maybe it's not coming. <laughs> yeah, you're right. it is coming. We don't know if the economy is good. We don't know if the economy is bad. How do you make business judgments yeah. when the Federal Reserve doesn't know what the hell it's doing? Do you think there's a political candidate who could just you know, clean the air on that front and say, hey, guys, just stop it. Stop yeah, what, what do you like for the 2016 race? Well, I've been trying to get Superman to come out of the comic books <laughs> and into the Republican So race. He, he wasn't on that stage the other night. No, we have I don't, I didn't no, But of him. course, all the candidates but, think but they're he Superman. Didn't, he didn't, maybe one of them will go into a phone booth and come out as Superman. <laughs> Seriously, though, are you, are you supporting anybody yet? Not, not yet. Uh, there are a number of them that I think could be serious, but... The silliness of the debates, which hopefully Fox will cure at the next <laughs> debate, um, has prevented there from being any serious discussion. Yeah. The election really shouldn't be about people's hairdos or energy <laughs> levels or fantasy football or things like that. It's well, we're gonna we're gonna be doing the next debate, uh, Wilbur. On I Tuesday. know, I know, and Fox I'm counting Business on Network. you to ask substantive questions. Thank you, Wilbur. Before you go, I want to ask you about China because during the break you said one of the bright spots is shipping. Right. That you see China doing well in shipping. Now today, the president, uh, the the prime minister of China says GDP should be no less than six and a half percent until 2020. <laughs> That's yeah. a pretty that's a pretty significant statement. He's it's not six and a half percent. Wilbur, it's not going to move by 30 basis points for five right, years. Right. So what do you I, tell I, us I, about China? Wilbur, I respectfully <laughs> disagree with him. I don't think it's growing at but six he's and in a half charge. even now. He's going to show six and a half. That's the point, right? He, he is in charge and they may report six and a half. But if you look at physical volume data, rail car loadings, truck deliveries, um, What's the electricity real consumption, um, telephone consumption, things like that, they're not growing at anything like 6 and Is it like 2%, percent, Wilbur? I think it's 3 4%, something like that, physical growth. Because not only their economy's mix is changing, mm -hmm. it's moving a bit away from investment-driven and export-driven, a little bit toward consumer. And it's driven. a lot harder to stimulate the consumption, right? Well, it's not only harder to stimulate, but it has a different impact on the rest of the world. Right. Consumption growth is not very raw material driven, whereas building factories and things very much uses steel and cement and copper and things like that. Really, really interesting. And you said shipping is doing well. Despite. Well, the, the oil transport part, the, we're mostly in crude tankers and in petroleum product tankers. Those have been doing fine. And curiously, good part of the reason is China, because the ratio of new car sales to the total universe of cars is quite high. So if you're having 20 odd million cars a year built, that's that many more units consuming gasoline and uh, transportation is the biggest use of uh, petroleum. Think, uh, but you think oil prices go up? I don't think they go up for quite a while because the problem hasn't been so much demand as it's been supply. That's true. Yeah. But that too is good for shipping because our largest single cost is bunker fuel. Mm. Wilbur, great to have you on the show today. Good to be Thank on. Thank you so nice. much. Thanks Wilbur Ross there.